So I figured I'd take a minute and uh, talk about the turbo differences between the 2.8 liter with the variable geometry and the 2.5 liter with the fixed geometry, which I imagine this is pretty similar to the earlier 2.8 liter with the fixed geometry. So I haven't seen that turbo, I'm just kind of guessing. But here we do have the stock one from 2.5 and then the US spec 2.8 variable geometry. So the way I've got them sitting out here, this is approximately how it sits in the vehicle. Um, this would be the, the top side of the turbo. And over here is our downpipe coming out and this flange. Um, and then same thing on the US spec one. Here's our outlet, just like my outlet. The variable geometry vacuum actuator sits at the top. And then here's the output, kind of a V-band output that comes out and dumps down on the exhaust pipe. So no real downpipe that bolts to this one. Uh, oil uh, supply is in pretty much the same place on both of them. Um, threads look the same. Same thing with the return line on the bottom side. It's this kind of flange pattern, and that looks like it's the same between these two turbos. So I think that would interchange between them without too much hassle. Uh, the plumbing spot's a little different, but that shouldn't be an issue. The big difference, though, is that on this uh, 2.5 engine, this is the exhaust manifold, which is pointed down. If you look at this one, the exhaust manifold's pointed to the side. So uh, they mount different, and I was initially looking at it going, oh, maybe I can make this work out, because if you look here, that's our, our flange bolt pattern, and it's very, very similar. In fact, here's the gasket from this one. See, that fits on nicely there. Well, if you come over here, it's basically the same. So this changed a little bit. This hole moved over. It's a little bit different flange, but I was like, well, maybe I can drill a hole here. And if you look at the access, the access would be really terrible in there. I think the reason that hole moved is it was just too hard to get into it uh, to tighten it. So I was looking at this going, okay, maybe I can clock this and I can have it sit like this in my in my Jeep with the exhaust section here and my, my output. There's nothing specific here. I can just bolt up a stock exhaust to it. And otherwise, you know, it'll sit pretty much the same. And I said, okay, so I can do that with the exhaust side of it. Come in here. But then I've got the inlet side. And clearly, that's going to have a very, very different mounting orientation. If I can physically bolt it up, my inlet's in a different spot, as well as my oil supply is now coming in the side, and my drain is going out the side, so it's not really going to drain oil right. Okay, so it's possible to reclock turbos. Well, let's take a look at this one and see what it takes. All right. Here's my inlet, here's my actuator. This needs to be to the top. So, if you come around and you start looking at the exhaust side, you go, okay, yeah, I see all these bolts here. See all these bolts in here. So I could unbolt the exhaust cartridge and spin it so it's clock different. However, what we start running into is if you do that, you're going to have some clearance issues. Because by the time that I take this, unbolt it from the exhaust, and rotate it so my actuator's upright, well, now my actuator's trying to sit over here. It's going to interfere with this flange. All right. So I can't do that. I have to do something different to get it to work out. Well, the problem is, if you look at this center section, too, I can't just leave the exhaust section alone and the center section alone and rotate the inlet, which, you know, looks like it's possible. There's those bolts around in here, I should be able to reclock it. If I reclocked the inlet here, the problem that I have now is that, uh, one, my center section's not pointed quite right, which maybe I could rotate it one and it would be okay. But two, see how this actuator attaches into everything and it comes up here? I'd be having to make a whole new actuation bracket or something in order to drive it correctly. And I just, there's a ton of fab work involved with that. So the short answer that I get out of this is that it's not very easy to just bolt on this newer variable geometry turbo to the older 2.5 exhaust manifold. Um, now, if we go look at the engine, oops. 
you can see this exhaust flange points down. There's our oil supply. Here's our return. Return's actually easier than uh, on the 2.8 because it's just a rubber hose that goes down. So that's not too big of a deal. There's plenty of play in it. But with this exhaust manifold, I'm basically not going to get that to work out. Now, I could go and I could start swapping around my exhaust manifold to a newer 2.8 exhaust manifold, which has the flange coming out here, which matches that newer turbo. But then I'm starting to modify stuff like this EGR, and maybe you don't run EGR, that's fine, you cap it off, and it should bolt up to this same head okay. But if I go through all that trouble, and I put on the other exhaust manifold, and I put on the newer turbo, I still have no way to control it on this older engine, because this older engine was a waste-gated turbo. So, you know, when you're looking at this US spec turbo, this is a vacuum actuated control. Okay, great. But what controls this is a pulse width modulated signal from the ECU through a solenoid. So the ECU has control over this position. This one, that's my, that's my wastegate actuator. It's got some preset spring rate. You can see it comes right off of uh, the outlet here. That's my boost pressure. And that's what actuates that. Now, good news is, I guess it's easy enough to throw a boost controller on here and do whatever you want with it, tune it up, whatever. But there's no electronic control of this. So the stock ECU doesn't have any way to control that. So not only do I have to go in and swap in a different exhaust manifold and lose my precious EGR system and have to change around my exhaust potentially, well, I now have to figure out a way to control this variable geometry turbo. So I'm getting into a whole other project of building an electronic standalone control that somehow ties into the existing control system in order to control my boost. So I can do all this, I can go to all this extreme, but it's getting to the point where I'm doing all this trouble. It's almost easier just to run the 2.8 engine management and everything else with it and just move away from 2.5. So, those are the differences. I'll give you a side view. This is the side that faces the engine. It's that actuator. Uh, there's this kind of V band that holds everything together. And uh, it's actually really easy to change the clocking on this one because that V band holds together and there's one little roll pin that clocks everything. So, if you wanted to change something there, you could. Um, that's interesting. It makes it easy to pull apart the center section from the outlet housing. You see it's a 4-bolt flange. It's got a VM casting mark on it. I've never been able to figure out what the name of this flange is or anything in particular about it. And then down here, it's just kind of a another 3-bolt flange that I don't know anything about in particular. So, anyways, that's that stock turbo. And here's the US 2.8 variable geometry one. Again, this is from the engine looking at the turbo. So, as you can see, they're, they're fairly different. Um, the uh, inlet on this guy, this diameter is bigger. If I can set that up. And you can kind of see, that's a pretty small inlet on this uh, turbo. Um, this one's labeled as IHI. I don't know what model it is. I don't even know if IHI was the final supplier. This turbo was from a pre-production engine from the year 2000. These things were being sold in 2002, so this may be some pre-production weirdness. Not sure. I'm not in Europe. I don't get to see the factory 2.5s all the time. This, however, is an OEM turbo from a 2005 and up uh, with the variable geometry. So there you go. That's kind of the difference. It's not super easy to swap between the two. And... Uh, you know, if you're ever looking at doing that, you're almost better off just switching engine management and harnessing everything around. So, there you go. Thanks for watching.